Welcome to part one of the session on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Identity and Access Management or IAM. This is a level 200 session. My name is KD and I am part of the OCI product management team. Uh, I would like to start by saying that this is uh, not a level 100 course. There is a separate uh, session on level 100. I would highly encourage you to watch uh, that session to get the basics before we get into this level 200 uh, course. Uh, but you know, I'll start by giving you a quick overview of, uh, of IAM and uh, what the different uh, uh, key components are and how these components come together in IAM. And then in this part, part one, I'm going to discuss uh, instance principles and dynamic groups in uh, more detail. Um, I'll talk about other objectives in the next part of this session. But let's start with a quick summary of IAM. Again, you know, all of these components are described in much more detail and much more properly in the level 100 session. Uh, but at a, at a high level, the identity and access management or IAM service enables you to control uh, who can do what in your OCI tenancy. Uh, so let's start in the middle. This is the IAM uh, service and let's look at uh, uh, who is making the request. This is all about the identities. Uh, so let's start at the bottom. Uh, there are users. Uh, user can be a person or uh, a system that needs to manage or use your uh, OCI resources. Uh, users uh, might need to, for example, uh, launch instances or uh, attach block volumes or uh, work with VCNs, etc. Uh, it's important to note that uh, uh, these IAM users are different than your uh, uh, application users, right? Application uh, users work at the application level. You might have your authentication authorization at the application level, uh, these are your end users. Uh, right here, I'm talking about, uh, when I talk about users in this in this context, it is about uh, IAM users. And uh, these IAM users uh, uh, have uh, one or more uh, different kind of IAM credentials to be able to uh, use your OCI resources. These uh, IAM credentials include things like uh, console password, uh, for signing into your OCI console. Uh, they might have uh, uh, API signing keys in PEM format for, uh, uh, for, for making those API requests that require some, some sort of an authentication. Uh, these credentials might also include uh, auth tokens uh, that, uh, uh, that are Oracle generated that can be used to authenticate with third party uh, APIs. Uh, these might include credentials uh, like uh, customer secret keys for using uh, Amazon S3 compatibility APIs with the OCI object storage. And uh, uh, another kind of IAM credentials is the SMTP credentials for using the OCI uh, email uh, service. Uh, and a collection of, of these uh, users, IAM users, uh, who uh, essentially need a similar type of access to a particular set of uh, resources, uh, they are uh, called a group. Uh, there are also uh, dynamic groups and there are uh, instance principles. Uh, these are contact, uh, concepts that I'm going to talk about in the, in the next uh, slide, so let's skip uh, them. But you, know, you have users with certain uh, IAM credentials and uh, there are groups. Uh, now let's uh, look at uh, you know, uh, how do you give permissions uh, to these uh, uh, different entities? Uh, and these permissions are uh, are given. Uh, the authentication is done using the username, password, and the IAM credentials like API signing keys that we just discussed. Uh, and now the author, you know, after the authentication, there is authorization. And this authorization is done by defining specific privileges of what can be done in policies and uh, then associating these uh, policies uh, with uh, the policies can actually be associated with uh, groups or with uh, compartments. Uh, 
the policies are uh, are, are comprised of uh, one or more statements uh, which specify who can access which resources and how they can access it uh, and uh, uh, access uh, you know it's fairly human readable we will get into policies in in much more uh, detail uh, but you know uh, there are uh, uh, verbs that you can use to write policies uh, and uh, the policies can be written for groups or for compartments. Compartments are uh, uh, a unique uh, OCI feature uh, which is uh, used to organize and isolate related cloud resources. So the IAM policies can be uh, written on, uh, on compartments as well. Um, and once uh, you know all of this uh, all of these things are in place. Uh, in the in the end, you have certain users that are part of groups. Uh, there are instance principles in dynamic groups. There are policies written on uh, on groups or compartments uh, that uh, that help you uh, define who can uh, do what in your OCI tenancy. Okay, so let's talk about instance principles and dynamic groups. Let's say that uh, you have an uh, OCI instance or an application running uh, on an OCI instance that needs to make an API call uh, to use uh, another OCI uh, resource, some other service. And so for that, it needs to make API calls. So how would you uh, do that? Uh, you know, there is the right way, which is uh, uh, the instance principle way but you know the other way uh, if there were no instance principles is to uh, take the uh, credentials the auth keys or whatever credentials uh, you might be using to make those uh, api calls and store them on these uh, op uh, on these oci instances uh, and if there are multiple instances you will have to store uh, these uh, credentials or, or this uh, in configuration files across all these uh, uh, different instances uh, and then you know uh, for security reasons you would have to then manage the credential rotation as well but, you know you have the credentials so you can make the uh, api uh, calls using those credentials from your applications that are on those instances but you know it's not very secure because now you have your credentials are everywhere so if you uh, somebody gets access to your uh, instance, uh, you know, your credentials are now uh, uh, lost, right? And th those credentials can can be used to make uh, uh, other API calls by these uh, bad actors who have unauthorized access. So, you know, you'll have to think about uh, security of these credentials. You have to think about uh, how do you rotate these credentials. Uh, you uh, would have to... Uh, and you know the uh, API calls coming from different instances uh, where you won't know uh, in audit logs where these uh, came from because uh, uh, these are all the same credentials uh, or you would need a different set of credentials uh, for, for different instances. So it's, it's tough. It's not very easy. And that's where uh, uh, the instance principles, uh, they come in. Uh, so it's an IAM uh, feature that enables uh, these OCI instances to be uh, to act like authorized actors or principles in other ways, other words, to perform um, uh, actions um, like make these API calls on OCI resources. Uh, you know, each compute instance has its own identity, and you know this identity is based on the OCID, uh, the OCID. Uh, but you know each instance has its own identity, and uh, it is going to authenticate uh, using the certificates that are added to it. Uh, you know you still need to authenticate it, but you know there are these certificates, and these certificates uh, is something you don't have to worry about. These are uh, created automatically. Uh, these are uh, assigned, you know, moved into the instances automatically, and these are rotated um, by OCI, uh, uh, so that you don't have to worry about uh, uh, number one storing the credentials on these instances, and number two rotating these credentials, and number three 
uh, you know, uh, you'll be able to, from audit logs, uh, figure out all the calls and their sources. Uh, so, you know, to uh, to implement uh, this instance principles uh, way, you would need to create uh, dynamic groups first. Uh, the notion of dynamic groups is that uh, they allow uh, you to group uh, these uh, instances together. You know, all the instances that need uh, similar privileges, uh, just like you would create IAM groups uh, for different users, uh, you would create uh, uh, I am dynamic groups uh, for uh, different instances that need several kind of uh, uh, policies to be written against them. Uh, and you know, once you create the group, you write these uh, policies uh, to allow all the instances in the dynamic group to make the API calls uh, against uh, OCI resources. Uh, and the membership in a dynamic group is. Uh, uh, is determined by a set of criteria that you define. Uh, it's called the matching rules. Uh, you know, so when you set up your dynamic groups, you define the uh, these rules and uh, resources that you know or the instances that match the rule uh, become uh, members of the dynamic group. Uh, so you know, uh, and as uh, you know, more resources are are launched, uh, you know, they are against uh, also matched against the dynamic group. So that's why. These are called dynamic because the membership can change over uh, over time. You know, so essentially, uh, you know, now when you are making these API calls from OCI instances, the authentication is at the instance level, and the authorization is uh, is done uh, via the membership in the in the dynamic uh, uh, group. So let's. Uh, uh, look at the steps to create instance an instance principle uh, and I'm going to show you these steps in the console shortly but the first step is to uh, you know go to the uh, identity portion of OCI console and uh, uh, go to the dynamic groups and uh, uh, create uh, a dynamic group and write a matching rule uh, this matching rule can uh, can define uh, you can list the uh, the instance OSITs that you want to be part of the dynamic group, or you can write uh, more complicated matching rules that uh, that exclude uh, specific instances from the group while including all the rest uh, of the instances in the in the compartment. For example, uh, the you know once the dynamic group and its matching rule is uh, rules are are defined, you can write more than one rule as well, uh, you then uh, write a policy against that dynamic group uh, to, to define what permissions uh, the members, uh, the member instances of the dynamic group uh, should receive. And the, the policies uh, follow similar syntax, uh, you know, there is the allow keyword and instead of the group keyword here you write dynamic group, uh, you provide the group name and, and then the privileges uh, are defined after that. Uh, so you write uh, these uh, policies. Uh, after these uh, policies are, are, uh, are written, you know, you are, uh, uh, you are ready uh, to have uh, the um, applications running in, in your OCI instances to make uh, uh, these uh, uh, API calls depending on, and these calls are, uh, are, are allowed or not, depending on uh, how you uh, have defined the uh, policies against your dynamic group. Let's go to the console to uh, to take a look at uh, how do you create a, a dynamic group. Uh, you know, you can get to uh, dynamic groups and instance principles uh, uh, under identity. I need to create a group. I need a uh, an instance ID for that. So let me uh, go and uh, and copy an um, OSID uh, for an instance I already have running. This is just an example, but you essentially go to uh, dynamic groups. I already have uh, a dynamic group in in place. Uh, this is uh, uh, this dynamic group has uh, 
the a single matching uh, rule in this case uh, but let's uh, look at the interface let's see i have a new um, dynamic group let me call it object dg um, and uh, here is where you can write the rule uh, there is an example and there is a nifty rule builder that you can uh, use you can say uh, whether it's a um, and or a or condition that you want to specify uh, i will just write a single uh, rule uh, so let's see i just want to write a rule uh, that uh, matches uh, uh, instance with with this id right this is my oset and this is my rule i can add tags if i want but now essentially i have created um, a dynamic group the membership in this uh, group is just one instance with this particular oset but i can write more complicated rules if i want uh, the next thing i can do is uh, go to uh, policies i have an existing uh, policy uh, in place for dynamic groups uh, but I can um, create a new policy. Let's see, my policy name is uh, object dg policy. Um, and then, you know, here is where I uh, put the statement. So my dynamic group is uh, called... Um, I believe it, I called it called it object uh, DG. If I'm not wrong, maybe uh, it was not capitalized, but we'll see. Um, so here I have uh, written a, a policy against my my dynamic uh, group. Now you know all the uh, credential management uh, for making API calls according to this policy on the uh, instances in the dynamic group are going to be automatically managed by the instance principles instance principles uh, feature of um, iam